I can't wait to play the dating sim. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should start with that, huh? I'm down. Yeah. All right. KFC dating simulator. Let's do it. Hooray. Woo. Our second hey. is, boys. What's up? This is my impression of Cry in July when it's 109 degrees. Summer, why are you trying to oppress people? Yeah, that's the a end. very good impression, actually. I just had to use that before I deleted it. <laughs> I had no other context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, if I click this button. All right. So you guys, sh that's really loud. You guys should, this, this looks amazing. Should be able to watch me on Discord now, actually. Oh my god! It's pretty sexy. The volume controls, they do nothing. Well, so there should the be a thing. That's for sure. There should be it a thing, actually, that you can me, slide. Yeah. It's next that. to the uh, stop watching. Oh, what's up, Yonser? Wait, what happened to Code Vein? Well, I was just showing Snake my Android 18 character. We weren't playing it. I just wanted him to look at it and make it make make him go, "Oh wow, yeah, yeah, I like that." Oh, oh wow, yeah. Mmm, <laughs> that's yeah, 18, that. all right. <laughs> <laughs> like you feed Jon Snow and Squid in Inspection Games. <laughs> all right. I'm yes. Russ, I just have to say that I'm very glad you didn't say mm, she's 18, all right. <laughs> I mean, she is, though. Who? That was definitely 18. Oh, uh, Android 18. Oh, I'm stupid. All right, we're going. Before we get started, tell us your name. All right. Who wants... To, oh, this is the chef. Who's the best chef in the house? Chef Fieri, but he's not here. Damn it. All right. Second best chef? Probably Jund, right? Oh, between us? A mean yeah. salad. Yeah, he yeah, does make good salads. Shallots. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, that's me. All right, so I apparently spit on my monitor while I was laughing earlier. Hold on a second while I just, uh... <laughs> there we okay. go. Okay. Wonderful. All right, so hence your name. Jundy. Mmm, mm, chicken Wait, business. Now there are two kernels. God damn it. <laughs> good to see both of you. Alright, who wants to be the narrator? Is that BTS? Oh my god. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> is a Korean boy band. Is the middle one Jimin? <laughs> it is not BTS. Oh, uh, whew. Alright, I'll be the narrator. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay up in the moment forever. <laughs> You slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. You really did. Game, game over. And... <laughs> I give up. Mm. Yay! <laughs> All right. Good run, guys. Time. Time. <laughs> hmm. Thanks, Blake, of course. All right, so we've learned that this is a Sierra game. Where you could, like, lose. Yeah. I just want to watch this again, don't mind me. All right, take two. Okay. I like the animation, though. Also, this reminds yeah. me of uh, Chicken and a Biscuit with Tabuscus. 
I'm really hungry now. I know, I'm sorry. All right. Smack that clock up and at him. Well, John, you're picking our decisions, by the way. Oh, all right. Because you're the chef. I didn't get to pick that one. My whole well, life's a lie. I mean, like, I assume I picked what you wanted to pick last time, which is throw the thing on the same bed this forever. This is video games. There's only an illusion of choice. Yeah, pretty much. But your illusion of choice is still in your hands. All right. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. I need to take this shit seriously! <sighs> I better make sure I've arrived prepared for the first day. You bust through the morning checklist. Teeth? Brushed. Hair? Combed. Pits? Deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon <laughs> you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friends, forever, Miriam. Ah, Chad, how's the volume? Is the the music too loud? Let me know before I go too far. Reminds me of like a Pokemon gym trainer. I don't know. Yeah, why. yeah. I can see that. So that's not the character from Bloodstained. Oh, God damn it! She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Here's Miriam. Obviously, it's Snake if it's Jundy's best friend forever. Okay, okay. Volume is apparently a little up. Yeah, I'm lowering it a bit. Should be good now. Good morning, Jundy. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually. <laughs> Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, but when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, you rescued me from that quicksand box. It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great, God <laughs> damn it. But with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid I'll of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <gasps> Should you pep talk her, or change the subject to give her some relief? Hmm... Pep talk. Alright. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember the card with the fancy looking tower? And then that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to be the handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating, and then you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk to Miriam, nope, as you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <laughs> can you believe I cut them myself? <laughs> you can chainsaw. definitely believe it. <laughs> I, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your ass and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Oh shit, the, the spoon's in my ass. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. The way Ashley's spell pisses me off. I know! Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Jundy's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. There. <sighs> 
You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add an extra letters to make yourself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, and has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working on his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <laughs> Van Van? Oh, is that Aww. a JoJo? <laughs> Russ, you're a Jojo. a Jojo. You know Jojo. You got this. Ora, ora. You rang, rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement oh is, God. but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, ma'am, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? Or maybe hire us as professors. Your amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh. I don't know how to make that sound. See you later, losers. <laughs> oh my god! As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What the fuck? Yeah. Oopsie. I think it's broken. It. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, should do the trick. I love you. <laughs> Uh, I think you, think you mean thank you. My name is Bob. I was named after my Bob Bob. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. <laughs> also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Uh, hi, hi, Pop. I am, I'm Jundi. So, are you, uh... You know, maybe hold this door all day, or...? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is it kind of terrifying? <laughs> no, you're right. You both shrug your shoulders before following the terrifying toddler into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. like the CEO up there? <laughs> I think it oh, is, hey, actually. the professor. <laughs> a scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of class. Adorable. <laughs> Who wants to be Sprinkles? Okay, I just typed KFC president, and it's just Obama eating chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good endorsement. <laughs> All right, I got this. No, <clears throat> no, quiet down, everyone. Oh, who's this unreasonable cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? He must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Ruff, please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little unfluffy, but I still demand respect. Ruff. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere. Wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. That chilly. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... Oof. If it isn't my favorite student, Harland! Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles... Sorry, Professor Doc. Before he can finish his sentence. Shit. Jund, can you be sexy? 
Uh, I was born to be sexy, but I'm not born to play a southern man. <laughs> well, howdy, y'all. Call me Colonel. He is from Texas. Colonel Sanders. As we all know, Kentucky is in Texas. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of dusks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. And you're not entirely wrong. Oh. And this is over here? Must be sweaty sweats a lot. Uh -huh. Maybe we should open the window back up. Faucet pits melts into a bottle and evaporates entirely. Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when... <laughs> Jumpy. Sweats is not gross, it's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> you gonna clean yourself up, Chunt? Let me think of my options. Okay. All right, let's go with that. It's a good thing you didn't forget about the deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world, the birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, there might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle! You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena! Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. <laughs> you got this, Cry. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. That's exactly the voice. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track right out of here, young man! Are you sure you're even in the right place, Roof? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? Um... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish! <sighs> Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! <sighs> Even Clank made it here on time, crawling halfway across the town on his tiny wheels! He turned to see the student sprinkles as referring to who appears to be in some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you <laughs> rascal! <laughs> Sprinkles walks into the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a big whiff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. Mm, you should be taking better care of yourself. Mm, you've never had a talking uh, dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Mm. Oh, we giving that bitch a beef treat. Mmm, beefy. You reach beneath your apron and return with a small bit of beef jerky in your hand. Not chicken? Mm-mm. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. Beef? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I would never eat that! You clearly do not belong here! Please remove your apron, and then remove yourself from this class and this school! You fool? Beef? All right. To a chicken professor dog? You fool! You wanna try again or give up? <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> Meanwhile... <laughs> In a heart attack. I want to know what happens if I click the popcorn up here. Oh, okay, it's just settings. So I gotta skip ahead again. Alright. Whoa! Howdy, y'all! Clean yourself up! What are you rousing over me, guys? Do you smell clanky? Rubber ball or chicken snack, Mr. Jund? <sighs> I mean, obviously the answer is chicken snack, but I want to see what a rubber ball does. You reach beneath your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. 
You toss the ball and he bounds after it, grabbing it in his mouth and swinging it from side to side before dropping it. The thrill passes quickly. It's not clear that that endeared you to him or not. Mm, settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, they're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Jundi, there's still a seat here. It seems no one has claimed a seat next to me if you're interested, partner. Yep. Fuck off, Miriam. Two good options, but... No, they're not. Sit by Connor Sanders. You move to take your seat by the Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows of a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks, Crofton. Thanks for having a seat. I only got two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. There's only one way you and ever feel I've accomplished something. I don't know what you said. Huh? A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pop quiz! <clears throat> yeah, quiz about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you silly little thing. This is an incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at a culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. Woof. Train A is traveling to point B, and train B is traveling to point A. How important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Second option. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to. Mm. <laughs> A flam fucking dunk, dude. <laughs> Alright, I want 100% this game's go feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Pork. That's just true. That's right! What food is best for a broken That's heart? questions. That's true. Can't uh, meet you. I mean, a pancake that looks like a silly face kind of would make me feel better. Mm. Even though I know it's number one. I gotta yeah. go with three. I'd rather see happy like a silly pancake. That's wrong! Fuck you, I'm out. Is, anything. is Sprinkles a good boy? He's best boy. That's right! Your total score is 4 out of 5! Oh, you have to click it. Only one wrong? Not too shabby! Wait, this is not him talking. Only one wrong? Not too shabby! You might just do alright, kid! You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching your tally your score. He nods with approval. Hmm, Did I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow. Cafeteria's as nice as the restaurant you've, uh, as any restaurant you've eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would be also serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be what the ro I mean, our lunch. It smells crazy good. Uh, everyone, can I have your attention? Is it a bad lunch? No, I, I just want to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Oh, howdy! I'd like to make an announcement. Oh, uh, hey, I, I was... It's about lunch. Oh, okay. Everyone cheers. Yeah. But I... Uh, I, I, I want to... Lunch, lunch, lunch. He said, shh. In honor of our new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. oh, tell me it's your sauce. <laughs> it must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents looks like his ass. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. 
Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for perfect fried chicken. By my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. These are what? all you. <laughs> you think your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a long will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got it? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary? Dear Diary, today I smell something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all for herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and acts unimpressed. <laughs> Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates. A dig in. Can I just say I really like her stockings because they have like holes for chicken legs in them. <laughs> They do. It's so nice. when she gets a sunburn or a tan, she'll just have like drumsticks on her legs. Yeah, that, it's see, so good. You think that's the design of the stocking, but that's where the chicken legs escaped. Oh, <laughs> they're like little like cookie cutters for chicken legs. Yes. Oh, gnarly. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. Yeah, pull it out my bucket. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hands, you float to die. weightlessly <laughs> and swim towards the light. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense, you become wrapped up in them, unable to resist. You reach toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer. Closer. So your fingertip connects with the end of everything. I see you're tasting the LSD. <laughs> you're forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no Jundi now. There's only herbs and spices. Uh, oh, Miriam tries to revive you. She cannot. Breathe, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. My job here is done. I, I, I legit, I, this is, I'm not like making, I have to, I have to get, I'll be right back. Wait, what's that? Okay. I have to get food. Like I'm so hungry now. Oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. All right. We'll get back to where we were. Uh, so yeah, uh -huh. he just choked on Colonel Sanders chicken in front of everyone. And Miriam didn't know the Heimlich. Mm. Or he put too much LSD in the chicken and he, and he overdosed. Someone get the meat tenderizer. <laughs> All right, so, so far, uh, would you say this game has exceeded your expectations? Yes. No. I like it. It has definitely inspired me to want to not eat KFC, because every time I go to KFC, it's, like, greasy as fuck. But, you know, maybe make my own chicken. Yeah. That sounds good. And put in at least 11 herbs and maybe some spices in that 11 herb. Hmm. That's fair. This game sucks. Well, apparently someone's a vegan. Damn. Hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. yep. Not a whole lot of options there. Thanks, Moose Caboose, by the way. Also, Draco Sky. Safe. They should have put, like, mm -hmm. a flavor meter or a flavor slider, but you can't turn it down or up. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's a good max. idea. Yeah, <laughs> just a max out flavor slider. Grayed out, yeah. Yeah. 
Or you like put it down, it just goes up by itself slowly. And the actual icon for it's like a golden piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Golden chicken. What's After wrong with this, being vegan? The, uh... well, nothing's wrong with being vegan. It just means that that's why he doesn't like the game at all. There's no other way. There's only way he wouldn't like it is because he is vegan. Vegan atheist weirdo likes it though, despite them being vegan, right? Vegan atheist weirdo. What? Uh, oh God! What if they don't actually? That that fuck. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hurry, hurry. Uh -oh. Say someone that Please. would definitely agree with you. Shit, like, they don't uh, like it. Uh, fuck, they don't like it. Damn it. No. Arrow, Arrow's, Arrow's ah! a vegan right now. Arrow, you love this game, right? Arrow, do you like it? Oh! You're vegan, right? Naomi, you're vegan. You love this game, Naomi, right? Naomi eats vegan stuff sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. She eats vegan cheesecakes. I've actually had uh, them before. Yeah. Yeah, how's that? They're not that bad. It doesn't taste like cheesecake. It just ta it tastes, tastes like a sweet dessert. Like, it's actually not that bad. Yeah. And I hear that if you want the best vegan cheese, the best vegan cheese is called Chao, C-H-A-O. I learned that on Good Mythical <clears throat> Morning. They did a vegan cheese taste test. Did There's they put it through a Brita filter provolone. first? <laughs> no, that's the other just shit. drink it? Oh, okay. They left the stuff in a margarita mix for a month and tried stuff like that. How was that? <laughs> it was gross as always. They had a Ugh. Whopper in there for a while. Ugh. Yeah. Dude, in honor of KFC, I'm making uh, mashed potatoes and gravy right now. I'm heating nice, it up. Nice, dude. Do you uh, Try make some biscuits with it? Is it going to be done soon? Or... Oh, man. Uh, in like two minutes, yeah. Okay. It's just microwavable. Got you. So we'll just keep uh, pause then for now. All right. I'm not vegan, but this game is very entertaining. there's going to be so sick. many parts. I wonder how long this game actually is. Do we have a... Actually, I can check Steam for that. Doesn't that show that now? It's about as long as Mass Effect 3. Okay, that's pretty short then. Um. Oh, I love you, Cool Sanders. We know. <laughs> Don't have to tell me twice, partner. <laughs> I love that canonically, our Colonel Sanders is from Texas. <laughs> Because we all know Kentucky's in Texas. Just because I moved to Kentucky and I capitalized on chicken doesn't mean I can't be from Texas now. <laughs> How long to be? Hmm. 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 Oh God, the name is so long it's hard to Google it because a bunch of other shit comes up when you type it. Damn it! Never make your game name too long, chat. It makes it hard to Google. DMs. Did he link shit to me? Let me check. In around 90 minutes. Oh, nice. All right, we could easily beat this tonight. Thank you. As if it's a challenge. We can definitely click the right choice. Dude, like, I mean, we have died a few times. I'm just saying. We. I mean, yeah. Are I sound sick? I am sick. Just congestedly sick. It's not like sick, 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 though. It's just, you know how... Post sick, post sictum. Russ's colonel voice sounds like my Texan relatives I've met at Thanksgiving terrified. Oh, well, S Sailor Kichi, uh, how you doing? You got yourself a boyfriend yet? Hmm. Maybe you got yourself a girlfriend. Which one? What? What? what how you swing? <laughs> Gotta ask the uncomfortable question. How's your school coming along? You graduate yet? How's uh, that? God. When you gonna have a kid? When's that gonna happen? So you like Trump too, right? Right? Good. Good. You want a Who smart kid? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, a smart one, huh? Oh Lord. They say make it great again, but it's been great ever since, you know. God. <laughs> so how's your mama and them? <laughs> they haven't talked to me in a while, but you know, yeah, I think that thing they're just busy. <laughs> Thank you, Des. Desdemona Lisa. I'm sorry, that did not say it right at all. Des. No, I did. Desdemona Lisa. Uh, Desdemona Lisa Twitch is their name, though. Got it. Easy. So, Kagashiki. Also, uh, 31 minutes ago, Plague of Crows. Um, What'd they do? What the fuck did they do? They threw $10 on the ground and said, Happy birthday, Snake. Oh, nice. Happy birthday, Snake. Happy birthday, Snake. It is not my, my birthday. birthday. We know. Yeah, I know. But, like, <clears throat> one of these days it's going to be. We just gotta hope it's on a Saturday. <laughs> and if it's I not, we'll just keep going until it is. I can neither confirm nor deny. Well, uh, we'll figure it out eventually. 
Just gotta hire a <laughs> private eye or something. Get a guy with a trench coat stalking outside your door with a camera, waiting mm -hmm. until he yeah, sees fedora. some people walking into your home yeah, with some, some balloons and a cake. Just yeah. waiting for that one time, you know? <laughs> and then he'll start taking the pictures. <laughs> yep. See that cake going in that house? I don't think that's for his daddy today. Nope. A bun bunch of different stills of like snakes sitting on the floor opening a present. <laughs> Pulls up the teddy bear and he's smiling. <laughs> Get some evidence of snakes smiling. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll have to pay super extra to get some of snakes singing in the shower. Oh man, dude! Imagine snakes singing in the shower. What would that sound like? I feel like my head might explode from the reverberations, kind of like a wine glass. Mmm. Snake. You gotta think of the acoustics too. Yeah. Like, I don't know if Snake would confirm or deny, but do you sing in the shower? Come on, say no. yes. Then never, you've animation. never sang in the shower. Come on. Like, I, like I'm sure I have when I was younger, but I don't. Wait, are you saying you don't shower now? Oh, he's a stinky boy. Oh, okay. maybe he rooms like a kitty cat. No, oh, I only he take licks baths. himself. Oh, yeah, like a kitty cat. He and milk. A little wrist. <laughs> That's why your skin's so soft. Yeah, you're such a soft it's boy. Milk. How much for the milk? How much you got? Got about 25 bucks. I'll do. All right. <laughs> Gamer milk for sale. That. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm good. Sorry. All good. All right. Welcome back, oh, everyone. How's we your We can potatoes? sell it as mother's milk. Come on. <laughs> we got Full the domain circle. and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, let's focus on them flavors. Wait, tell me more, though. Have you taken a bite of them potatoes? They're way too hot. Have you? Well, tell me about the gravy you have used here. Is this like beef gravy? Yeah, we talking uh, like we got brown gravy, we got country gravy. I yeah, don't know. It's that one that's in like the, is it brown? the packet. Is it yeah. brown? Brown gravy? Or is it yeah, white? It's brown. All right, it's probably oh, brown beef. It's, it's definitely brown. It's a beef based thing. Yeah, okay, brown beef Ooh. gravy. All right, basic yeah. gravy. Okay, I'm okay, okay. Wait, you have, who has white gravy with mashed potatoes? Southern hey, people generally do. It's what we do. You okay. do that? Work? Yeah, you do that. Um, yeah. White gravy, mashed potatoes, and country fried steak. Yeah. Or country fried chicken. Or chicken, chicken fried steak. Chicken fried steak, oh, that's shit. what it's called. Yeah. That's like a total southern thing. No. Huh. Yeah. Well, call me illiterate. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, the oh, cream gravy just said, illiterate. I do. <laughs> <laughs> cream gravy definitely does. All right. Let's do it, gamers. Numero uno. Numero uno. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every. You're gonna go insane. Every single You're flavor. Going you let the food. I said food. You let the food, food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Wait, what? Hold on one second. Oh, Cry got rid of the Pro ZD tweet he had bookmarked. Always wonder what that was. What? I had a Pro ZD tweet book? Nah, he's lost his mind. Oh, okay. Mm, pepper? Oh, yeah, that's, that's obvious. Oregano? I'm gonna go European. Basil? Maybe. Uh, it was something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still. Until you find it. Could it be... You really did it. How bold, how adventurous. Do you use Beatrix? You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, and you realize that this information was meant to remain a secret. Yet... Now you know. The mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. Also, I just remembered the Pro ZD bookmark thing. I did have one bookmark, but I accidentally bookmarked it, and I finally cleaned my bookmarks, and I, I did remove it. So wow. Finnick wasn't going crazy. You call him insane. No, I'm sorry, Finnick. I just now realized what you were talking about. As long as you look forward, around, nope. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by lunch. The 
No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You gonna do it? I... yeah. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so mm. softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. <sighs> Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. After I lower the music, yes. <laughs> Anything for a fellow chef. What was on that chicken man? Ha <gasps> <laughs> ha! How bold of you to ask. I had an idea. I had for a new combination of flavors that will make for make me of my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me are talking. <laughs> I can keep a secret, please. In fact, I got some of my own I can really trade. I'll sell them out. I don't fucking care. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> look at his look of disgust at the idea of sharing his secret with this freaking naive chef. Now get out of my sight, plebeian. <laughs> Colonel He's, Sanders didn't like that. He's clearly not gonna give it up easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Just learning me fun. Oh, oh! you've got mocks. <laughs> I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath <sighs> as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... <laughs> it's something my great, great grandmother taught me. Wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And definitely isn't the flavor you've tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped That's up That's right, plutonium. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation of plutonium, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside, look at school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I'm dead. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. <laughs> Meg, you have to show your own strength. I like how fucked up that is. <laughs> Do it. He ain't shit. You know, I've been thinking about your secret recipe. Of course you were. You simply don't forget a flavor combination like that. Oh, I really like that, Sid. AFC equals co-fucking-cane. That's <laughs> exactly right. I remember it because I've tasted it before. I stopped at a random fried chicken stand the other day, and it tasted exactly like your piece of shit. Ooh! Hmm. Did you just compare my recipe to some random chicken shit fried chicken shit? Oh, yeah. That's a really good stand. Especially considering he was a Frozen first. Oh, shit. Ooh. Colonel Sanders goes in the limit break. <gasps> frozen? Chicken? Colonel Sanders. Oh, my God. Colonel Sanders struggles to conceal his emotions, fighting back tears of anger. You tasted my chicken, now taste lead! <laughs> I can't believe you say such a thing. Realize you've done it irreparable damage to your relationship from which it can never recover. He's hurt. How could you, partner? Hey, Jundi, you saw that this game was called a dating sim, right? If that's your idea of dating, then this game is not for you. Game over! Get out of my life! God, you hurt his feelings! There was no legacy after that.
Dude, this game is not cool with you dissing KFC. This is a KFC branding deal game. You say anything bad really? about KFC. My legacy will be obesity. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's a branding deal. Like, I mean, this game was made by the KFC company, so I mean, it's essentially an advertisement, right? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it, yeah, it's essentially a branding deal if you think about it. We're playing a commercial. Yeah, it's a commercial. Yeah. I mean, it, honestly, this is. I wish more thing like companies did this kind of marketing. How much though, you paid for fucking this? Fucking hilarious. This is free. It's free. Exactly. And, like this is like more companies should do this shit. It's freaking hilarious. All right, the second one's gonna piss him off too. So do the third one. I mean, we could do the second one. What if he thought that was ambitious of you? He's like, oh my no, god. No, he's gonna be like, how? Oh my god. Dare you assume? Twelve. Perfect. Twelve herbs and spices. Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> I'm no, going okay. off the grid just like in Rick and Morty. Know about that i was thinking about your secret recipe i don't doubt it it's delicious you decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds i actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it because it's not perfect improve it you want to change my secret recipe and you think you can do better ever heard of habanero peppers <gasps> Heard of I tend an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Habanero, blah blah cayenne. What? But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients to a secret recipe and expect to improve it. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. And I didn't. I didn't mean to. Get out of my sight, you trash! I'm <laughs> heading back to class for the next list. That certainly didn't go as planned. You'd better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. Wow, I actually thought it was gonna kill us again, so... Huh. That was like the medium choice. Oh. Shit. Well, uh... RIP! <laughs> Alright. You step into the massive cooking arena, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they need, could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second, oh no. We have to show our stuff, what if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything except Colonel Sanders, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature, adorable China food creations. Ah, Dan, I'm starting to sound Southern, it's rubbing off. Welcome, students, Welcome, brother, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pat off. Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, uh, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? Team of two? Twosome? You want to have a twosome with me? Let me over there. Oh, sure, Jundy. I'll prepare the station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Mm. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Why choose? They're gonna choose each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? How do you want to sabotage Miriam? <laughs> I mean... Plank. That's probably the, the lesser of two evils, right? Yeah, honestly. Sorry, uh, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. Here we eat. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of the school even is at this election juncture. <laughs> Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Oh god! Oh god! Is he... exploding? Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but... There's something charming about, uh, charming and earnest about him. It blinks. It does blink. Tissue. Oh, that's pretty cool. I hardly know you. T. 
plank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking glasswork. That's... I think they'll be great friends. That's adorable. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Make a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Ruff. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Oh man, I saw this chicken on this like stand. It was so good. Mash oh, he's gonna love mashed potatoes. And yeah, gravy. he would. That's the perfect combo. I'm oh. gonna steal your recipe and put it in a chain of local restaurants. Oh my God, what if this is the like? Holy shit! What if it's like the origin story? Yeah, like canonically, like this is how KFC's was made, and like you're like. Did I found KFC? Yeah. And there was a robot there. Yeah, and a dog, and a weird boy. Well, it's been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we can make something warm, inviting, comforting. Like, like babies. Maybe uh, mashed <laughs> potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? Couldn't imagine one or imagine one without the other. Well, I do sometimes just have some butter and some salt and pepper, and it's just fine. Same. Yeah. True. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me, a southern gentleman. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. mm. Looks like the thing, uh, looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sandy? Like, look at that. I love how there's just three legs of chicken on the one tight, not the other one, just that one. So she would just have three chicken legs sunburned on her freaking body if she got a sunburn. Hell yeah. That's so cool. Fuck off, bitch. We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Whoa. Psh, Sandy's heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Mm. <laughs> uh, did somebody call for Van Van the Man Man? Uh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Jundi's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. What was that deal, remember? Or that was the deal, whatever. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, <laughs> Chalet Van Van. Are we working on a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no, it looked like Jundi was struggling, so we had to offer, we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders. Craig, can you be Van Van, be Van Van. Okay, I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day, you might be able to get up to my level. Ha, <laughs> doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts who's or whatsoever about Colonel Sandy's ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Fuck you! But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this trash that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. The music's looping and she's coming for <laughs> Colonel and if you don't watch out, Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get uggo. What if Ashley ends up being the CEO of like McDonald's? <laughs> Shit, that would be intense. She is evil after all. And Van Van is Burger King. She's got the thighs for it. Save me, Colonel. I'm here to learn and express myself human cruelty. The beaker with prima donna bitches. Fuck out of here. Partner's already chosen. With all respect the format. Capiche? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're uh -oh. on the same page. Relationship check, here it comes. 
I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? Sometimes conflicts can actually build character. I wouldn't want to shy away from a bit of healthy competition from our peers, Jundy. Wow, is he just not that into you? You'd think a gentleman would defend you in a situation like this. Did you do something to offend him at some point? Yeah. No, it's because of my decision earlier. No, uh, this isn't your fault. This isn't your fault at all, Jundy. No. We could have had him as a partner. We could have. We'll never invest. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking an autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes in the perfectly creamy mashed texture <laughs> with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps, and you know so well why your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding ah. a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Oh yeah, you like that? Mm -hmm. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. My, my potatoes! The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Right now it's a dating sim. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and the pressure in this crazy world stops. Eat up, bitch. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, Set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift the heaping spook. <laughs> <laughs> Sporkful. <laughs> when you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know oh. she's plotting against you. More gravy. To be with Colonel Sanders. And then. Filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, Hell beautiful yeah. face. Oh, Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and what the fuck, nightmares! Realizes that it's delicious! Horrified oh. by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold up right there, Jundy! We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena! Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you! If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat from wherever it lands! Oh no. It is, it is Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal! Gaze upon my specialty! Braised tentacle of octopus and my salty salt water sauce! Bladed on a battle axe blade, forged by my supreme chef yes, ancestors! Yes, 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 yes! You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will look on with envy. The interrupting students rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and I, I've turned the process in toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, I, I love something in the oven. I, uh, I don't feel so good. Hey, kill him! <laughs> Everyone step back! He's a ghost! Don't take another bite! <laughs> when you look back at the plate, no, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. 
Papa winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. It's like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motion as motionless as statues. A class bell rings, disrupting the moment, snapping everyone back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite <laughs> obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Pop never die. I'm not sure the professor's here to make enough money. <laughs> Fuck. Um, hello? Wait, uh, uh, um, hello? I just turned into a ghost here. Seeing that you're shaken up by the reality. Oh, nope. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let, let this gentleman walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark, and more than a little spooky! Colonel Sanders is in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I, I, I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. <gasps> Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. In a way that you find inspiring. <clears throat> now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. <sighs> Colonel Sanders? Yes, Jundi? <sighs> something I need to tell you? Uh, hold it right you there! Want... There's something I need to tell you first! Ooh, I uh, do like Van Van more. Jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I I had a dream. Oh, don't that, you do this shit. Don't that one day I this. would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, you know, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant us them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no! Uh, you. Shut up! I don't want to hear the same inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! Oh, are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! Hmm. I also saw you kill that gentleman. Uh, what was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Uh, forget him! We're, we're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero! Yeah. Oh my god. Uh. Snake? <laughs> Modified snake. The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Uh, I, uh, I think I left the French, French door open. Uh, later, nerds! We will not let harm come to another stoop. Except for that ghost kid, I, I, I mean, kind of dropped the ball now. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See? Is, is, he, is he rhyming on purpose or is this just like a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence! What will you do? Whoa! So. <laughs> What would what would you right, do, Judd? We gotta defend and study his attack first. You're right, that's so smart. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Ooh. <laughs> you close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. 
Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Oh no. Fat lot of good that defense did. You decide to go on the attack. Ooh. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster focus their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack him again. What do you forget you go on the attack? What are you gonna do? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses Utilitensil! You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle. Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn with Quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares his ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. My villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons an energy of 1,000 oh, chickens oh, that he's oh, got oh, their oh, souls oh, of because oh, he's oh, killed oh, them all. Popeye Power Pinch! Popeye Power Pinch does 10 damage! Spork Monster is defeated. Uh. Oh, you saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Finish him. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. You ready your final attack. You'll never survive my... <laughs> student debt loan... Fuck. Student loan debt destruction! Does 10 damage. Spork Monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. Oh, you continue to surprise me, Mr. Jundy. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a Necronomicon. It's a book of magical spells <laughs> with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it is Borko. Hmm. Borko? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy, keep your eyes open. Darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Chicken! He says chicken for some reason, and it's really weird. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. The guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. <laughs> <laughs> in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love dream. Um? Dreams are weird. <laughs> I'm still dead, guy. You awake on day two and attempt to process. That was day one? Two to go. Holy shit. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting the Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used. And there, there was that secret ingredient. Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. <sighs> Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. 
Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You go meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but... <laughs> what happened to you? Where are you? <laughs> I, just no. I just woke up. It's fine. I think <laughs> I might be, um... I, I think I might like playing. Oh, no! It's because they had intercourse, and now she's a cyborg lady. That's how it happens. Fuck! She got the nano machines. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I, I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. Told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Do you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in this high school? No, but of course. That makes sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. It was also <laughs> a convertible that he himself rode in that in front. Wait, what? He's in a parade, it's fine. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. I don't know. Either way, uh, maybe it'd be best if you had took it slow with this new boy. Like, oh, I don't know, you know, just me and Colonel Sanders kind of thing right now. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cookie School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now. Well, we definitely connected yesterday, if you know what I mean. Aww. It will. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing, definitely not cool. You're great. You have an idea on how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? I, I just said that, a secret ingredient. It's like a dramatic echo in here? Kind of, actually. Miriam checks to make sure that you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dry flower petal. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. God, don't. Oh, no, don't. Please. Ugh. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. After about 20 minutes. So, wait a second. Earlier we said KFC equals co fucking Kane. Mm hmm. Turns out. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me. And the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being real liberal here with the meaning of spices. Whatever. Anyway, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about the new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe and... Besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I, I doubt it'd be much use to you. <coughs> please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. I want us to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Yeah, is the freaking just MSG? Probably. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' fake secret or share it with your best team? Fake ingredient, fuck my friends. I'm here to get bitches. Hell yeah. You quickly think up of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, about 
It was the uh, Eye of Newt. I don't know, sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. Also, it's probably something from the Harry Potter series or what have you. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone and can't quite see. That's probably not good. Or you can ask her to continue, uh, to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. The wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders! <laughs> He's arriving at school! Run to him! You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely, he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel! My Colonel! <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, Dead. kicking you directly in the face. The Be force gone, of the blow huh? completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, Don't you see a vision. Again. Uh, John D, I'm here to deliver a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. Aw, oh, jeez! You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is it just his natural seasoned musk? <laughs> Do it. Whoa, 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 whoa! You've known him for a day, are you really sure? I guess he Fuck must up, be narrator. pulling off the Sandlot trick. You put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kissy smoochie. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Uh, Too soon! Uh, Clearly mistook his compassion for love. Uh, your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. Game rest over! Rest in peace. <sighs> Shucks. That's just how it be sometimes. Yep. Gotta know when to leave. shot in. you don't take. That's true. When was the last time you leaned in? Oh my god! When was the last time you leaned in for a kiss you didn't know if you get a kiss back from or not? Oof. <laughs> god, I don't know. See, I just don't do that. <laughs> I just avoid those situations. Here you go. Alright, so, make a fake ingredient. Love is over. Alright, you still wanna run to him? Start, everyone's gonna start cooking with I have new <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right I like how that the sound of the horse synced up with the ghost so that's just what he's <laughs> All right, compliment the every time he comes back he's on horseback maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know it's hard to say who was in the wrong here but one thing is for sure the Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy that horse has Beautiful shoes. You really feel how smooth and sturdy they were. But more thing in my face. Just so we're, I'll step on your face. Just so we're clear, if a horse kicks you in the face, you're just dead, right? You're Probably. most likely in a bad way. Okay. If you live. Because like our skulls protect us, but I don't know if they can protect us that well. Horses kick pretty hard. Yeah, they're really strong. I mean, it's called horsepower for a reason, you know what I mean? They're great at soccer. <laughs> they really are. 
Oh, is it, that's nice to hear. <laughs> no one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, Bye. leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Aishley and Van Van, are doing something naughty. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really Hold bad. Hold on. Hmm? We have someone caught. Wait. <laughs> There's someone, someone in chat who is role playing a Moogle. What? My Koopo? sister got kicked by one. It broke her helmet and gave her a concussion, Koopo. God damn it, why? Because why not? Like, of all the things to like role play, I have never seen someone do a Moogle. This I know a sassy guy. Moogle. It's true. <sighs> Sorry, I just I found that hilarious. I <laughs> wait. What Koopa? <laughs> I love it. What Yo. if their inner key is just Hold macro on. to have Koopa at the end of every <laughs> sentence? Slash. Be here. Slash VIP one sassy move. Oh hell yeah! I support that. There we go. All right, now we'll always see our our resident Moogle in chat. <laughs> like. Counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mine your own wax, honey? Hun, stop acting immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Mm -hmm. Culinary school is to re be respected. It's kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Oh, people in chat are saying what, uh, like, uh, that there's a no RP rule. I actually removed that rule a few years ago, or a few months ago, uh, because I wanted to trim down the rules, because they were kind of outdated. I made those rules, like, years and years ago. So that's actually not a rule Yeah, nobody's anymore. cybering in the chat anymore, so yeah, you could. Yeah, that was you're the only problem. Wrong. Back in the day, people were cybering when there was no stream going on. Too much kissing and hand-holding. That was weird. Okay. Just don't freaking jerk off in chat. <laughs> that's really it. You can be Koopas if you want. Now you've upset them! <sighs> oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Ooh. I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ain't you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a good look at what it was that they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book! Just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. It's the same book I found last night with the Spook Monster! Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. The book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Play. D. Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Clank must be running late. Uh, he's in such a hurry that he rolls out right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Mm -mm. Loves you. You're really good at that, Mr. Blank. I don't Blank. like that. I Thanks. love it a lot, actually. <gasps> I, I didn't like the Gloms you part. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> the character, man. <laughs> Just reading the lines. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, even from a stand mixer. Mm -hmm. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. I said cloth instead of cross. <laughs> oh. 
protect me, Colonel Sandys. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? A gentleman! Get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal that the true start of the class day has begun. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Ruff! Students, students, please take your seats! I apologize for my late arrival! I spent the morning chasing a car around town and my tiny legs are very, very tired! Oh, but I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn! You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I get a little worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. <laughs> It'd be a lesson to you. Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. <laughs> Down, boy! Down! <gasps> Off Hoppin! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I, I, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Oh, without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Surely you do. Which is why in 1776, the signing of the Declaration of the Independence, it was a chicken who first signed. But you can't help nice. but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Chundi? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? I want to earn some points. I'm going to go with the dog biscuit. Mm. Because of the shape, it's baked in higher. You is... Wait, what? Slightly higher on the mic, please? I can't make it higher. It's as high as it goes. Okay. Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents, perhaps. You reach for it when... Sprinkles jumps up and bites your freaking cooking apron! What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class oh, looks on in horror as you fall You're unconscious dead. from embarrassment. I never even got to taste him. Can this be the end? Getting between a dog and his bone probably isn't a great choice. Game over. Dang. Life's hard sometimes. Wait, are we gonna go right back to the very beginning when we're like, he's on horseback? Uh oh. I think it's the beginning of the no! class. Oh. Speed. I am new. I am a southern gentleman. Run to me. Boom. My name. Don't kiss me. You did it again. You kissed me. Game over. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot which one we did. <laughs> <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> I of Newt. I of Newt. Was my name? I hope there isn't an actual prophecy with that ghost. He just wants us to learn his name. Yeah, he's really lonely. Alright, we're, we're making good progress here. Hell yeah, this, this dude, the splits are insane right now. Alright, so no dog biscuiting this time. Okay. Shimmering pepper. Okay. A 
brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip and through the universe. <laughs> My friend, oh. This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> uh, I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> huh? Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, I got some spice stuck in my throat. Uh, oh, yeah, it's 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 fine. I'll, I'll work through. <laughs> you, uh, to 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 fulfill uh, <laughs> the prophecy. Uh, you must. Uh, <laughs> you feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man. You come to, and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever! You it's think why you to yourself, it to me. Jeez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes, I'm sure it'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lit's dim. I definitely said lit's and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via time comp competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Your own! <laughs> Little lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. I gotta wipe the table with you fools. Before I set my lunch down, then uh, so be it. I'm not the fool! You're the fool! Fool! <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Jundy. I'll be watching your oh, performance. <laughs> Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. he just travel on the column? Uh, yeah. yeah, otherwise he's too short, dude. It's like a segue. Now, now, students! Please settle down! This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court! Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer! And just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about! Ah, uh, stand corrected. The hard way builds solid or solidity or so solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote from me. In case anyone was wondering, I hope it's a message that lifts you to a victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now's my chance to shine. Look at those thighs, though. They're so chunky. Thick. Yeah. I will defeat you myself. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, damn it, that picture, that picture. What? Of her. Her uh -huh. legs were reversed. What? Oh, shit, I should have looked. Damn it. Uh, if, if it pops up again, I'll, I'll, I'll right. point it out. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, if the timer runs down, You'll be forced to pick randomly. Same what temperature game. does water boil at? Oh shit, 100 C, go. That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? When it gets to rub my furry belly, let that enticing offer motivate you. You're gonna need to season this chicken before you cook it. 
You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he I used? Love it. That's right! You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. <laughs> now that you've got some basic steps going, I did wavel my ass during that. It's time to elevate your craft! What state of mind offers the most flavor? Oh god, uh... Trust. That's wrong! Bitch, please! I'm begging you to get it together! Get it out of a dog. It, it's never the right time for some dog jokes. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. Where does it come from? Small town where big dreams are born. That's right! This is your shot! And you're not gonna miss it. You try to shut out that noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. That's wrong! What? Don't make me get the spray bottle! What Next question. That? You notice Colonel Sanders out the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Jundy. He's actually cheering you on! Which would be awesome. Except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoofles of gravy, dog? Oh, what were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition! You are stranded on a deserted island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind! Sorry, forgot uh, the question. No, on the beach. Oh, fuck! What does that have to do with the spending spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the sand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Yikes. I just sneezed like six times. I'm not seeing a fellow appliance utilized in the kitchen battle. Sometimes I mean sacrificing a personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Jundi does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue the dough before it's overmixed. Oh, no. Jundi, no. But you're not fast oh, enough, God. and your hand gets stuck! It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters! There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match! Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. <laughs> oh, shake my head. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Oh, everyone, stop what you're doing right now! This battle is over! It can't be! I was so close to finishing my dish! Sweetheart, look at your hand! You simply can't go on! Aw, that's too bad! And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default! No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Jundi's injury! You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared? Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Ooh. Under the white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I'm going to ask Jundi to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sandy, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. 
Colonel Sandy pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients held within. A new car. Uh, inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry. Was it Geely? Geely? Geely! Geely! Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Where's the chicken? Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it? <laughs> Oh, you <laughs> As he places a sauce-covered fingy to his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize my rage! Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. <laughs> the flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. You're dead. And they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, the storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. He won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but the running with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. <laughs> Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. He's trying to comfort you with that face right now. Shut up. I love it to fill your fryer. I'll never be a um, master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed? At anything before, because you'd be right. <laughs> exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at some dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed. As an ob obstetrician? What? Obstetrician? Obstetrician? I, I, I don't even know what that is. Me either. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one's especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. Mm. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've, well, I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it wasn't always been like that. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money could deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside him. A burning passion. Also an obstetrician as a baby deliverer. Oh. Oh yeah. One has a way to remember every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants. And that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. <laughs> yeah. just what as the fuck was that sound? Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Borko, the Spork Monster is here to fuck. <laughs> Anyone feeling a bit of deja vu? Sorry, Gorko. I swore we already battled you last night. 
That was Gorko, my twin. And I, Gorko, am here to avenge them. Are you stronger than Borko? No, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He's already on the same page as you. Just that we beat Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you have much of a chance. Not to mention, I feel really guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would. I think what Jundi is trying to say is, can't we just be friends? Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose we really don't need to fight. It's just that I've got these buggy teeth and claws. All the better to be enjoying tasty food. Surely you like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do. Inspiration strikes and you come up with a quick idea. Chop on this! You toss a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth and he devours it in one gulp. Um, delicious. You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a chihuahua. Huh. But I was still a student at the school until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book gets a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. We killed a person? Magic spell book. <laughs> Precisely. Orko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Wow. Waiting. <gasps> Sounds like we got some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Jundi. Together, I am sure we can defeat. Come back to my hideaway, and we can discuss... A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his <laughs> things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Oh my god, that kid picture. Yeah. Oh my He's god. He's got a little goatee and everything. <laughs> Holding up a little chicken. <laughs> Uh Looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk food with another ambitious chef. Well, there's something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with. Try to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not even sure I nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish he might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy or both, perhaps? Now you've oh God, got we, are right we where about you want reveal, reveal, reveal it. Should you reveal your to new creation to him? Or spicy? Or keep it a secret? just for you you decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with colonel sanders this is how we get the second ingredient before you can talk yourself out of it you decide to dive in head first you reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day i present to you my original co oh, oh, shit. <laughs> my original coleslaw Oh, I can't wait to steal this! The shredded cabbage glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' looks hide away. <gasps> Magnificent! Together, you chow down on the creamy um, slaw um, until um, just a spoonful remains um, in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I like to have it around so I can admire the taste later and um, think back on this moment. That's so gross. <laughs> You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Uh, yeah, it's fucking weird, sure. Please, it's not that weird, but make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a moment when I go slip into a better dress. Like, just saving one bite's the weird part. If it was more, that'd be okay, I guess. But it's just one bite, I you know? I think he's just saving it in his mouth. 
in like the back of his mouth. He's oh. like, Colonel Sanders is gonna be the villain, and he's just gonna analyze it and steal your recipe, dude. No. Just saying. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, I, I was just trying to advance wherever it was, but I accidentally clicked on that. But so look whatever. at this chicken! Look at that chicken! You notice look a very realistic chicken. stuffed chicken sitting on the corner of the table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It, it's real! Taxidermy? Must have been real important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. Little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state of bird of the great state of Kentucky. You can hear his voice as you read it. Where do you want to click now, Jundi? Baby. An adorable little baby crawls across the floor. From a goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just himself? That's true. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? Camel. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his <laughs> secret herbs and spices and time travel? <laughs> oh. Oh shit. That no, door no, no, opened. not yet. We Let's go in there. More no, no, no. More the, the, herbs, the herbs and spices could be in that urn. Taste Who's it. Who um, the, 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 the two guys? Okay. One of the frame photos shows an old man who looks a bit Something's like not right Colonel here. Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. This is weird. It is. Who, no, not what's in the urn, who's in the urn. Mm. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures, as well as my enemies. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, what's he drinking there on the table? That's a candle, my dad. Oh, I thought Why it was coleslaw. <laughs> a scented candle. You pick it up and try to drink it. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. No, it's one of the secret ingredients recipes. It's Agent Orange. What's uh, on the table? It's a comb. Yep. A lock of silver you hair. Can start is your hair doll. Yeah. Woven through the teeth of the comb. It's one of the secret ingredients. Oh yeah. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just as silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Whoa! Uh, the other thing that's not the door. This must be where he keeps the secret in recipe. Oh, it's a safe. Ooh, you think for a moment. What <laughs> number is important to Colonel Sanders? Four tones on you. <laughs> as soon as you turn the dial to 11 11 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. No. <laughs> Check the outside. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, outside. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. <laughs> Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? I, I don't even know your name, dude. Why, why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... You just see in the middle of something? Jesus. You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Oh no. All right, let's go fuck. 
You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket's a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in its scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on. He wants you to taste it. You try to act casual, until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh, crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. Also, were you smelling my jacket? It's apparently a uh, thing in Japan to eat sashimi-style chicken. Huh. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. Nope. Yeah, me either. That's <laughs> raw, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like cousin wobble. Sal Manella. Tell this man the truth. Keep it up and keep Thank you, Wibble Wobble. Like the Colonel's fried chicken. Thank you, Wibble. All right, what's up? Tell him the truth. I just wanted to smell you. You confess. Oh my God! Whoa! Feeling free. This is not what I meant. I just meant to say I just wanted to wear your fucking jacket game. What the hell? You just got mass affected. Yep. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dream. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But Jundi, no! The thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. <laughs> Colonel! Hmm. Yeah, what's up? <sighs> I honestly think you think he was meeting. I think you're right. We should take things no. slow, no, no, like, a, no, like a no, slow no. cooker. You no. talk cooker. late yeah. into the night and drift off. I brought you a meal and you didn't even eat it. Dream sequence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was day two. You awake to a beautiful morning at Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurors, Agent Orange isn't even legal. But if the recipe is secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast. Your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. Look how simple it is. Ridiculous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that they're were a perfect match or what? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. <laughs> such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flattery will get you everywhere. Flatter his ass. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? This is all happening so quickly! Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Oh, fuck. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School and Academy for Learning wits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best <laughs> friend is waiting for you. Where have you been? Uh, because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. Uh, it's all right. I was, I was just like... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Uh, yeah. Sure. Do not believe Sorry. what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sure I believe that. Since I've been partnered with Clark, 
He asked me out or to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> but he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, sure. And then I got to know his vibration settings. Oh, wow. My God. <laughs> Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and I'm, now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night, girl. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection wows her. Mm, Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Why is that a button? I guess Why they didn't want to talk about it. I don't know. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go to your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, Pop. What's a swirly? Sounds delicious. Oh, it's great! I'll order you one up right away. I let my swirly with speakers, please. Please, because it's a dog in the three. Oh. Oh, I, I can kit you a swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own s shit? They're both huge. Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. That's what I was saying. There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ugh. You've got some nerve, Jundy, suggesting I pick on defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I will not have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you could go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Never. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is uh, everyone always, is everyone excited for the final day of school? Jundi, how's the hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. I love how school's just three days long in this world. That's the whole semester. That's dope. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but uh, your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was uh, clear that you're passionate about your food is received. Uh, it's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Uh, excuse me, Jundi. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk the class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine food and fine ladies. See ya, Jundi. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from your slighted, by how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's a book? Looks like bad news. Just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff, even though it came from a fucking demon. <laughs> a grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book that weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. Let's fuck with it. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. 
broadcast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Damn. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine, that is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. Pretty good excuse to try it out. Ooh. But all the ingredients we learned, no! It's true, we would fail. Is this Shit. your decision, Jund? So is this like the... So this is like the, do I follow my own path or do I follow the Sanders path? Do you want to be a Popeyes boy and or a KFC and in boy? A KFC, <laughs> and in a KFC commercial, you know the right answer. Yeah, I mean, I guarantee the cast of Forbidden Spell is just going to make us lose. <laughs> you forgot how to breathe and you get embarrassed. You also <laughs> forgot that you're a chef. All right, I guess don't do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class, dude. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and begins to breathe quickly. <laughs> Second one. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you to never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by the not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Can you imagine showing up to, like, class, and then your teacher just turns feral and just starts pissing everywhere? <laughs> no, thank you. It happens sometimes. It's a dog thing. Dog moment, I understand. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Dundee, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see... But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Babe. But no, you had to show off your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, Day and Jay forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. <laughs> and take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold or all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Mm. Plank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of its gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has no wheels, or has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. It'll loop again, I think. There it goes. I'll eat that. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks all right. 
Plank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend that they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pale a, a Paul over the final day of school. Well, that was um, unfortunate, but we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. This time approaches, see you all in the arena. But before you can think about the upcoming competition, the very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. But you didn't teach us anything. That's true. Hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Uh. Okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You, girl, you don't need any money, right? Me and you, we gonna cruise through this final test, hit the carpool lane of Success City. Me and Colonel, you can... Right, you shotgun. Go. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feelings all the way because she's thinking of Colonel Sanders there, and it's kind of weird. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sandy's stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Oh, no, I am. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else that you meet today or tomorrow, but this whole year, so what? You're a special person who soon settled for the first someone to show a little interest in you anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. You know, Jundi, you gave a really good advice there to Miriam. That was very mature of you. What did I say? You don't need the first guy to show you any bit of affection. Oh, yeah, honestly, Clank seemed pretty cool, though. I mean, yeah, but he did take her skydiving just to impress his friends. No, That's more uh, of that, a... See, you, only heard, you only heard her side of the story, so you haven't talked to Clank yet. Well, we don't know his language. And that's on you for being, uh, being considerate of his language. Robotist, I guess. Mm -hmm. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea on how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head into the arena early to practice a dish. <sighs> this is it. The location of your final battle. Challenge. Test of will. Test of courage. Test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van the Supposed Man-Man. Why is he not in jail? And his evil-er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Jundi's famous chicken pot pie. It's famous. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you. You're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. You got Sanders. fucking blossoms in my got, food again, man. You gotta stop doing this. Got some more ideas I can steal? Jundi, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, just taking it all in. I'm kind of like big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and I'm just picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. I could steal it. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry. Last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when you got a boner. The oven timer goes up behind you. Fess up. I ain't lying to this man. He knows. All right, yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah, just give me the trade secrets. A little bit more than visualizing. It's the Marie Callender's pot pie. Oh, I know. I can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. 
That's an oddly specific distance. But you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all buttery crust. I like Sweet's message. Once you hit 401 yards, it's like, what is that? <laughs> Could be anything. <laughs> And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha ha, no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. Oh. THC. You had the mm. band playing some music in the background on a stereo. I also added some salt and pepper. But it'll probably be burning any second if you don't pull it out. Pull out! Pull out now! The moment of truth! Wow. Came out already opened. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I ever did tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. So who took a bite already? Was it Pop? It was me. Oh, you son of a bitch! I just tasted it. Right it. Out of the oven, 500 degrees. <laughs> God damn. There's no I time have to left. I so bad, and I'm not going to because this is a tense moment. This is really tense. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules! That is, except to cook with everything you've got! We're just gonna make the KFC menu, you already know it. Oh yeah. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe restricted fried chicken. The intensity of the room starts at, at full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious! Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, best taster, bad blimp. Van Van <laughs> flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. <gasps> Wait, when did Clink? It's the singularity, as was foretold! We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all! Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out into the back door of the arena. Yeah, get that trash out of here. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own. You're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's almost <clears throat> certainly evil magic? Never. Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion, baby? Okay, look. Look at her legs. Yes. Ooh! Is oh. That, is, oh. It's, it's confusing. Yeah. A little bit. I see what I you mean. She was twisting her body. I think is that twisting. that's such a twist that it's like... It's pretty uh, anime. That's so like scary. It. Oh, God. She's very flexible. I just feel like her this the the leg there on the that the, the that one should be behind that one. Right, yeah. Yeah. Alright. Move on. Oh shit. <laughs> Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms. And he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Wink. I believe in you, Jundy! 
Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Jundi. Since we were little kids. Comes I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam? What about your dish? You're here cheering. Who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but I want you to sabotage my shit. Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. Bitch, what? It's the secret I am new! No! No! However, she doesn't know that you lied about the secret ingredient and that was made up. Where in the world did she get Eye of New from? Pocket sand. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? Where was, the, was Gorko? Ah, you're not here to battle me, are you? These spork monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Hmm. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. Crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Uh, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of like... I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the Grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Yeah, I guessed it, sorta. Uh, if you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel a spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know what exactly, or don't know where exactly they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like the time in monster school that I'd fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever <laughs> win. Summon extra power from deep within myself. Unlimited power! I can do this side what it takes. I came here. The fuck. You have to power up. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energies flow through your body! I, I have no idea what that wasn't even words. You're not supposed to use the Yes, John D. You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady. My taste buds have been pairing their entire lives for this moment, I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy's coursing through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which Cher can do. That would be super useful, because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked and in the oven and you can't be served! But don't worry, dear Jundi. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside I'm you. I'm here to help. I can float too. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and the time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What happened to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a 
guy. Also, I, I think KFC just admitted to doing some potentially illegal things, maybe. There are no rules! Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken you have ever laid your eyes on! And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual... Are you... What are you... Are you suggesting we do some blow? If we combine... Yeah, you got some blow? Let's do this! Up, students! Oh, no shit. blow Don't talk anymore! <laughs> With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes! A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Hop, Plank? From off screen, you hear a pure, innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> the clay. I don't think it's coming from that broom closet over there. They throw the shrubs. Mir Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hooked by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? A little wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. I'd be excused. Sure, he has a little better bit of luck next out of him. year. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! What did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other animatopopoeia. Uh, there's nothing. <laughs> Somehow, oh, somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Anime Taco Pia. <laughs> <laughs> wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made Aww. tender udon noodles and savory soup. That's so cute. My word, it is so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narrow tomaki I spy afloat in its itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the air before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue tip the tip and the tip in the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, it's not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. E plus! Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours! Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Chandi, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up! Now describe your dish. I made... <laughs> Uni over smooth egg custard in an axion urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of sea urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. Bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Ruff! Ruff! Please be gentle with my cuisine! 
Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the oh, sting. Oh, no! I can't eat this! I can't eat my tongue! It's terrifying! A stunning turn of events! Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could be make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van Nuts go gentle into the night. Disqualified? For glamour? Don't discount sympathy! Oh, simplicity! This isn't the last you've heard of me! Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of man milk. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student! Ashley, it's time to step up. I gotta pee. <laughs> now describe your dish. I made... Orange blossom Turkish delight in light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and it connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Oh shit. <laughs> Don't eat junk food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Jundi? I told you, display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an ex eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to a college of eating, school for the hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified! Rage overtakes Ashley. And she finally cannot keep her two-face routine up. You wouldn't know high cuisine if you took up the two And with that, Ashley stormed off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to fake nice it and be liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either! This class gets much smaller. I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? We'll wait for John for this. It seems like this I'm is like, here. Okay, what began here. as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing <laughs> and eyeing the bowl. Good. It's a market bowl. It sure is. God. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this... this... thing. And completely blow me away! In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced! It's so delicious, in fact, that... And everyone passes the class! You pass! Yay. You pass! You pass! And you get a pass! Yay. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to be transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic Fragrance. I like he's called the Mad Van Van. The Van Van. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They yes, were. That... Yeah, I do. Yeah, alien sound. 
they were supposed to be more or there were supposed to be more battles but come on how could it be better than this one now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on mm, 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 the cafeteria mm, mm, has completely redecorated mm, 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 in order to mm, mm, serve mm, as the site mm, of the school's mm, graduation mm, dance mm, compared mm, to the massive high-tech mm, cooking mm, arena mm, the humble mm, decor mm, seems downright mm, cute mm, and cozy mm, dj sprinkles in the You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turnablist? No, oh, turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley, whoa. whoa wow. Look at them gym shorts, dude. I'm digging both of them right now. Damn! Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe him. I want that tank top. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed in graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. <laughs> uh, I was actually a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone refer me to my new name, Party Monster. Wait a second. Snake's new name is Party Monster. You're Party Monster. Party Monster. Also, Ghost Student was just in Colonel Sanders' home at one point. Then. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. How do you, how do you get sucked out though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Students, student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry. Party monster. Dejected. Student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantic. Oh, she's adorable. She looks cute. Romantically. But she found the love in her cooking. And you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Could command such an entrance. Oh, I wonder. It's oh. Pop! He's arrived the late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Hey, dude, he's king of the prom! King. That's what oh, no. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop! I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, that's why he's here, because he's fucking stupid. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Oh no. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank. And I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind and the recipes of Colonel Sanders, I must return. Oh shit, shoot that robot! <laughs> Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Ratchet. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. Well, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. <laughs> Finally. Colonel Sanders arrives, caked in cherry blossom petals. Woo! Uh, howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he's become, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. He's brought a seed. This time it's a full meal. Woo! 
I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and a man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. Man. Peter, I stole all of your man, shit. Your potatoes and your coffee. I made this. I feel like they they doubled down on the taters. He forgot to get some mac and cheese in this. I man. made this. Um, go out and buy my chicken. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Jundy, what are you doing here sitting all by your lonesome? Waiting for you. <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, maybe I just, whew, what are the qualities you looking for? Uh, yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Spicy musk. A tidy goatee and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Just to name a few. It is truly my lucky day. Would you like to dance? With my chicken, please buy my chicken. Uh. Yeah, I. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in chicken with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it with you, my Jundi. How sweet. We'll work together and play together, but can you explain the older version of yourself in those pictures? Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Uh, I too have to go back to my planet and dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need this is something I need to do by myself. Sorry. Who will help you run your restaurants? The franchisees. Also, someone just gifted a sub to KFC Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on the time of your school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. You are beneath me. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other life? The life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I... <laughs> I could be a pastry bitch. Oh, my dear Jundi, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Let's smooch. Whoa! <laughs> you know... That was cute. Now let's play the VR game. <laughs> oh, I love this intro. Friends. Shit can be with you all. That was a really, uh, I'm really hungry now from playing Same. this game. Yeah, right? Like, I really want to order KFC. They got this me. worked. This worked. They fucking got me. It worked, man. Can I get KFC at 12:30 a night? I don't think so. Probably not. No. Darn. That's a shame. <sighs> I mean, have you guys had a motherfucking KFC market or a famous bowl? Not in a while, and now I want mm. one. Mm, dude. So good. Some mashed taters, chicken, uh, some gravy. I believe they put corn in there too. Mm. I love corn. I love some corn in my potatoes. Mm. Ugh. Sadly, the KFC in my town is under construction. No! Time to go to the next town over. To What's the other town in the Simpsons world? You know, the weird town that they don't like. Shelbyville. Going to. Shelbyville. You gotta go to Shelbyville. To get some KFC. Hell yeah, brother. Oh. Right now I gotta fucking pee though. BRB. Yeah, that's fair. I think this is a good time to take a pee break. I need to go grab a snacky wacky, I think, after this freaking experience. I think most people probably wanna grab something.
but let's do that. So, chat, thank you very much uh, for joining us for that lovely time. Uh, I had a good time with that game. I don't know about you guys, but that exceeded all my expectations. I mean, we didn't, get the, we didn't get the fuck, but that's okay. How many endings does that game have? Like, I'm curious, like, what the, like, how much they did for that. Because we only did one thing, technically. So, no head? No, we didn't get head. I'm sorry. Does it only have one? Aw, oh, man. Not sure. I doubt any other ending is too different. That's fair. I don't think they probably... They probably weren't allowed to be like, and then you and Colonel Sanders made passionate love and stuff, because, I, you know... In the end, they still gotta go with what's, uh, you know, corporate will allow. So, they could probably only do so many things. Come on. Is that ever gets uh, to fuck each other? Yeah. Wait, is that how it works in Tenchi Muyo as well? Yeah, sure. I don't remember those girls getting along so well. You didn't read the right dojinshins or whatever. 